Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it's my pleasure to speak um, on this bill and create a resounding build-up to the moment when Sue Moroni will have the opportunity to speak to her bill. Some may be confused as to why she hasn't already. It's simply because the National Party appears to be trying to collapse the debate, which is indicative of how they have treated this bill entirely. The fact that it is absolutely extraordinary. It is absolutely extraordinary that we face a bill tonight that has majority support in the House, majority support from MPs in this House, and we still face the prospect that it may not pass. Now, that hasn't happened yet, but I sincerely hope that we have a situation where the will of the Members of Parliament, who are here to represent New Zealand, who have resoundingly said we support this bill, I would hope that that will is listened to. Mr Speaker, I want to begin, though, by acknowledging the work of Sue Moroni. Um, I remember when Sue proposed um, an extension of paid parental leave to our caucus, um, because that's a process we go through when we have members' bills. Um, and it was clear to me at that time that although you know, there is a fantastic evidence base behind what, what has been proposed um, by Sue and in conjunction with the Labour Party. A fantastically strong evidence base. Uh, everything that she needed to present in order to get this bill through was, um, was there. Um, she would costed it out as far as we were able with those resources. And again, that's costing that's being extended by the work of the Select Committee. But what was really clear to me was Sue's absolute passion and commitment to this issue. She's been joined by members of the community, particularly who want to pay homage to the 26 for babies. The passion within that group comes from a deep understanding of the pressures of parenthood. That's what struck me, the pressures of parenthood and the deep desire for all parents to do the very best they can by their children and particularly their newborns. And those two groups have done such a fabulous, Sue and uh, 26 for Babies have done such a fabulous job and I acknowledge their work here in this house tonight. Mr Chair, I want to highlight what it is that this, that this bill actually does. We know that um, currently, and it remains currently, in New Zealand, paid parental leave is stuck at a relatively low 14 weeks. Now, yes, the government made some changes recently, but they're not coming in for a little while yet. Now, that is probably one of the reasons why, when you compare New Zealand to other OECD nations, we spend roughly half what other OECD nations do on the early years of a child's life, around the $20,000 mark. Uh, and that's when you take into account health, education, every bit of spending that goes on in those first five years. So we spend half in terms of that investment. Now, you can put that down, actually, to things like the fact that New Zealand doesn't really have uh, universal um, uh, credits, family tax credits for families with newborns. Um, we don't have a particularly lengthy period of paid parental leave. Those are the reasons, predominantly, that we spend so much less than other OECD nations. Um, but there is good evidence to suggest why we should. We know that the most important period of a child's life is the first three years in particular the first six months and first year of that child's life. We know that um, pay parental leave uh, is based on, uh, at six months, is based around strong evidence from the World Health Organization. Um, all of that evidence is, is there and is strong and is um, irrefutable. So that is the reason that Sue ultimately brought this bill forward and why Labor has supported uh, this bill every step of the way. I think probably, uh, as I've said, the, the strength of support you see from this bill, from families in particular, is borne out, I'm sure, from personal experience. Now, Mr Speaker, I don't um, have children, but my sister very recently um, brought into my family um, the first grandchild, and it was the most exciting uh, thing for my family. But watching my sister struggle with choices around work uh, and being a caregiver, uh, I can only, only imagine what that feels like when you're a mother and a new mother. Uh, and I think that's really brought home to me the importance of this, this bill, which is ultimately about trying to give family more choice when they're in those very early stages of a child's life. The Growing Up in New Zealand study demonstrates again, I think, 
that actually most families are trying to get to that six months leave mark as best they can, even if they only are given their 14 weeks paid parental leave. When you look at some of the statistics, the work that's been done, you see that families are cobbling together whatever um, sick leave they might have, whatever um, uh, holiday leave they have, and even unpaid leave to try and get at least to that six month mark. And that sends a strong signal to us that at least, and actually it tends to look like it's more six to nine months, that that's kind of the marker where parents uh, at least want to reach before they even have to consider going back into, um, back into the workplace. So that should be the marker for us about what we should be looking at in terms of a policy response. Now I acknowledge, Mr Speaker, that there are a range of views on paid parental leave. Some people out there in this sector have said, look, if we're picking an initiative, we would do X or Y or Z first. It's our view, Mr Speaker, that the evidence is overwhelming for paid parental leave and that it's not mutually exclusive from doing, undertaking other initiatives which assist families who aren't eligible for paid parental leave. We don't have to make a choice between the two. And in fact, Labor hasn't made a choice between the two. That was one of the reasons we brought in our Best Start package. We acknowledge that 40% of families would be eligible for paid parental leave at six months under a Labor government, but for those who are not, we wanted there to be a little bit of extra support for them as well, and that's what our $60 a week payment for almost every family, 95% of families, are eligible for that payment. And what I would highlight as well, Mr um, Speaker, is that the Best Start payment for someone on paid parental leave kicks in after their paid parental leave has finished and it continues on for another six months. So in all, uh, those families would receive a year of support from Labor. And why is that? Well, ultimately, it's our belief that actually giving parents that choice, that extra support for the first year, is our ultimate goal, but one we know it's going to take us a little longer to get to when it comes to extending paid parental leave. So this is a way that we can bridge and provide a little bit of extra support um, for those families in that first year while we look to be able to um, extend paid parental leave. Now that also, I think, highlights the fact that we've been, um, uh, we've been fiscally responsible in the way that we've rolled out this policy. We costed it, we decided we couldn't go as far as we might want to, we've put that on hold and we've gone as far as we can in a staged way. I do find it interesting, Mr Speaker, that actually when we brought out the Best Start package as a whole, uh, the National Government called it unaffordable. Uh, it wasn't that far off the costings of their families' package in the budget, but apparently that's totally affordable because National came up with it. Uh, you'd have to, to explain to me the differences between the two because as far as I can tell, it seems to be that they're just playing into rhetoric and attempts to uh, attempts to slate what I would say, a little promo here, is an excellent package, Mr Speaker, and one that Labor is very, very proud of. Um, Mr Speaker, I'll save my very last words for um, the National Party. Uh, as I said in the beginning of my address, it is, uh, it is a rare thing that we have majority support for members' bills in this House. Uh, when it happens, it's fantastic. Uh, we see it with the odd conscience bill. Uh, marriage equality was a fantastic debate to have because it showed that we could come together on bills that were for, uh, for want of a better word, the greater good. I would put this bill in this category. There is majority support for this bill tonight, Mr Speaker. Now, that should mean that it passes. And anyone's view of democracy, um, the simplistic view, if you believe in democracy and the majority of people vote for something, it should get through. Uh, so I would hope that that is the outcome tonight, Mr Speaker, because that will be the best outcome, not just politically, not just for politics, but for kids and for families and in particular for mums. I commend this bill to this House and I look forward to seeing the National Party allowing it to see it through to the end. <laughs> Point of order, Jamie Lee Mr Speaker, can I refer you to Standing Order 1361 and Speaker's Ruling 664? 1361 in Standing Orders indicates that except where otherwise provided, as soon as the debate upon a question is concluded, the Speaker puts the question. 664 says once a vote is commenced, <coughs> it has to be no, completed. No, no, the, um, <coughs> The interpretate my ruling is this: <clears throat> while there was no member that accepted at the at the time when the next call was to be taken, I 
uh, was moving to uh, put the, uh, the, the motion for the vote, uh, but I never completed it. And until the vote is actually, the uh, words that I use uh, to put the vote is actually concluded, then I can accept a call at any stage during that, and during that time, and that's exactly what I did. So the ruling that I made at the time is correct, and that was the end of the matter. Now, someone seeking the call, Chris Ockenvold. Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.